Welcome back to another Doctor Who book review. Today we're going to be taking a look at yet another recent Doctor Who book release. This time around it is Doctor Who and the Cricket Men by Douglas Adams and adapted by James Goss. This is a recent Doctor Who book release and one of which that I've virtually not heard of before up until actually reading it. This was marketed as the Lost Doctor Who story. Sharda was also marketed as the Lost Doctor Who story and I think that if you've seen my Sharda review recently I don't know if it'll be up already or coming in the near future depending on how these uploads go because I normally sort of film out of time and things like that I normally pre-film. I basically mentioned in the Sharda review that Sharda is no longer the Lost Doctor Who story. It's one of those rather unusual ones that is marketed as a Lost Doctor Who story, yet it's also the same Doctor Who story to literally probably have many different alterations both from audio drama, novelisation, visuals, animation, BBC internet webcast type thing. It's got so many different versions. This is the real Doctor Who lost story. This is an actual lost episode of Doctor Who that was meant to be in the fourth Doctor era. It never actually happened. And it is Doctor Who and the Cricket Men by Douglas Adams. And it sounds really weird. And it is a rather unusual story. And this is, in fact, I do believe my biggest Doctor Who book read to date. And it is a rather fun sort of spacey opera romp. Thing. So firstly, where can you get this book from? The recommended retail is $16.99. However, due to it being a rather snazzy hardback, I have realised that these do tend to vary in price. Currently on Amazon, it is priced at £11.89. However, I do know that this has been going up to about £20 in some shops, such as Waterstones. So some do tend to put on money, but it is very nice. As you can see, we get Doctor Who at the very top, all nice and glossy. Long Doctor Who and the Cricket Men nicely printed at the very front. Very nice spine as well. I do really like the Cricket Men font. It's almost sort of made out of cardboard, kind of. I do quite like that. Then, of course, on the very back, you get a rather simplistic Doctor Who logo. Once again, BBC, then a cricket ball there. And then the actual book itself, the font on the inside is, in fact, rather sort of, I would say, a medium font, as you can see. So it is around the actual story. 360 pages long and then we also get like about 40 pages of appendix stuff and sort of behind the scenes of Douglas Adams. However due to it being a book release you can also get it in a number of different versions. You can get a Kindle edition for $9.99, hardcover as I say for $11.89. You can also get audiobook versions both in audiobook CD which is physical for £13.67 or you can start your free trial with Audible and um, if you've already not started your free trial with Audible and you can actually get this book for free on the audio mp3 format. So yeah, if you've not done that, but I sort of recommend starting your Audible account that you can get this for free and then sort of listen to it and enjoy it. But that's physical books like me, then this is definitely a nice one to pick up, as I say, partly down to that embossy logo at the top alone. But yeah, it's a nice read. I like it generally when you can read a book and actually flick between the pages. It's definitely a little bit more of a novelty when compared to that, say, like a tablet or a Kindle or something. Firstly, what is Doctor Who and the Cricket Men? Because a few months ago, I literally didn't have a clue what this thing was, so no doubt quite a lot of you won't either. This is basically a true Doctor Who lost classic that was originally penned by Douglas Adams. It was originally intended to be his first contribution to the series. However, it was handed to the producer at the time and it was actually rejected. And then I do believe that he went to Paramount or something like that, the big film company, and was uh, wanting to pitch a Doctor Who film series. And then once again, he pitched this script and then for some reason it was rejected. God knows why, because it is a bloody good story. And they kind of missed out on that and it would have opened like a whole different era of Doctor Who, presumably with possibly a whole different Doctor or even a fourth Doctor movie that would be quite cool um, as that has been sort of an opportunity for Doctor Who because originally the Doctor Who the movie with the 8th Doctor was also good to have the 4th Doctor in as the actual Doctor and then that would have sort of messed up with canon and stuff but yeah generally I think that this is a rather unusual one because it was then adapted for the popular series in the 1980s the radio play series I do believe it was called Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy once again written by Douglas Adams I do believe that it has been incredibly popular something of which I've never actually delved into however I've heard very good things about and then after that it was kind of rejected and it was sort of left to be in the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and Doctor Who never heard of it again. Until now, when James Goss came along and actually adapted the script for the TV series into an actual novelisation. So you can listen to the actual Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy episode and maybe understand elements and in fact the first ever version of this story to be publicly released that has got the Doctor in, the Companion in, K9 in and actually sort of gives us the representation of what it would have looked like in the actual TV series itself. And to be honest, it is basically a bit of a film format. It's sort of almost like a grandiose, massive space invasion type thing. I could imagine this actually being a fourth Doctor film. I think that sometimes when it comes to reading books, especially when it comes to ones with classic Doctors, I've only sort of read the short anthologies so far that have been released previously last year. This is actually my first ever big Doctor Who classic book read, and I could actually picture this in my head. I could picture Romana, I could picture the fourth Doctor, and I could also picture K9 as well, having these little quirky moments in there. 
there and it's just basically this massive Doctor Who story that really has this impact behind it but at the same time is really comedic. I did mention in my Sharda review when filming that that Sharda is a really unusual Doctor Who story where it has this rather nice comedic element however at the same time it has a very serious narrative behind it as well and this is very much a similar situation for this story. I really like the way that Douglas Adams actually sort of manipulates the fourth Doctor and changes him to actually be sort of this very comedic Doctor but at the same time you can take him very seriously. I think that even in the most serious situations he can add odd quirky line in there or a little quirky twist and you'd still sort of not really batter an eyelid. It wouldn't take you out of the moment which is something that is definitely very much prominent within the new series itself such as when we had all the fun comedic moments with the 12th Doctor in his era. That very much suffered from that because it wasn't exactly funny in the first place but at the same time it actually distracted you from the main plot. It brought you out of the story but with this it actually feels within character and I think that Douglas Adams has got a very good grasp of the fourth Doctor and the way that we can have sort of this different version of him that is funny but at the same time you understand him, you take him very seriously so one minute he could be like ha 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 jokes and the next minute you can just imagine his face going very serious and then saying this rather deep line about everything being dark in the future. I think that one line that he says in Sharda is something like I have looked bright into the future and it's very dark indeed or something like that and it's just sort of it's a little bit quirky but at the same time has some truth behind it. I think that that is something that's prominent for this release as well. There is lots of funny moments. I actually found myself laughing to certain points in this book because even K9 has a character. I think that more than often in the classic series he ends up literally being that trundling little computer that goes around not really doing much, sort of saying affirmative every so often, going and doing something else. However, within this story he develops his character further, he has an actual involvement within the story, the Doctor has a relationship with his dog, there's a moment where he actually has this sort of conversation with him about being a sentient robot and sort of having thoughts and feelings and how he actually sort of feels for K9 emotionally. And then we have Romana in there as well, involving that sort of Time Lady format and it is incredibly interesting to have a Time Lady like Romana that is pretty much the Doctor. There is no denying that within the actual TV series itself, even in such episodes as Destiny of the Daleks, you pretty much had a pink version of the fourth Doctor's costume, even down to the scarf being a little less bright and it was just a white version, but the had a sonic screwdriver as well that was a little bit smaller than the fourth Doctor one to sort of be held in her hand a little bit more sort of comfortably. And yeah, this is in 1970s Doctor Who, where you pretty much have the equivalent of a female Doctor. Do you see where I'm going with this yet? Because in this episode we have Romana taking control. We have her going to Earth in the later act of this story and actually saving it from invasion from the Cricket Men. And yet she's very much a female incarnation of the Doctor and that is why I think that people should give a female Doctor an actual chance because I think that even in 1970s Doctor Who, even throughout this story, we have the idea of the female Doctor actually played with, actually involved in the story and it works. It works very well. I didn't in fact think throughout the story, oh, this is a female version of the Doctor, or Romana is trying to be a female version of the Doctor. I just thought Romana is being very doctorly here, and I quite like it. It developed her character further, and much like in Sharda as well, I thought that she had some very doctorly elements throughout that story, taking control at certain points. She's very much a strong, independent female character, and I do like that. I think that she's definitely a big twist from what we have in other classic female companions. The actual story itself for the Cricket Men, I'm not going to go into it in absolutely every single detail, because because it is a massive story, it is split into two parts, and yeah, it's basically a massive cinematic romp, and I can't exactly say it out loud in a serious manner, because it does sound, when you take it out of context, incredibly ridiculous, because if you're somebody who's not really very knowledgeable of cricket, like me, I did used to play it, but sort of in primary school when, it, when I was like forced to, but basically you have this thing called a wicket, and it's this thing with three stumps on, and then a thing on top, and then a base at the bottom. You're probably imagining this in your head right now, probably a little bit better than I currently am but yeah it's basically a wicket thing. Imagine a giant wicket that is basically spread throughout the universe and it's split into its different parts but this wicket is a gate to bring back a race called the Cricket Men. Basically massive cricket uniforms and sort of big massive stumpy things that you almost get in America kind of and they have a ship that is basically a big massive pavilion and it's basically what if cricket wasn't in fact an innocent game that is played by people on earth but instead it's in fact a very serious 
warmongering race that is basically going to wipe out absolutely everybody. And it is, I can't take it seriously. I don't think it is actually something that is meant to be took seriously because the fourth Doctor doesn't particularly take it seriously in the beginning either. I think that at the very start of the story and at the very end, we return to the fourth Doctor and Romana are going to see the ashes and we have that involved throughout the story and how sort of cricket has been intertwined within sort of human culture and then we go to these other planets and we have these many different characterizations of these different planets. We have one that is insulted by absolutely everything. It says, um, such as these little creatures that say, I'm insulted by you thinking that I need help and then sort of the doctor will say something and then they say, I'm, I'm insulted by the fact that you just assume that I need help and all this. It's like an incredibly awkward species and almost it intertwines kind of the awkwardness and how everybody is offended by absolutely everything on the internet these days. I think it is very sort of prominent of that. I think that James Goss reflects that incredibly well also. And you have this other race where they're pretty much sort of creating this idea of tourism and how this colony has kind of gone from a little civilian community to this big massive tourist destination where people can go. It's definitely very big, very grandiose, and you definitely get this atmosphere of the universe is big and everything is going to die. There later on where Romana goes to save Earth and she pretty much comes into a characterisation of Margaret Thatcher as the Prime Minister. It's a female Prime Minister. I don't particularly know if it is meant to be Margaret Thatcher, but it is sort of a female Prime Minister and at the time I do believe we would have had Margaret Thatcher as the Prime Minister. I think maybe at the time of this was being written, I don't particularly know. But yeah, we have that British element intertwined as well. At the very end, that whole idea of cricket and then we have the TARDIS landing on sort of Westminster and kind of having Big Ben in the background as well. And I imagine this in my head as being, this is Doctor Who, this is all the British stuff in it, and this is us making it feel like a very British sci-fi series, and just having the moment of the Prime Minister essentially being in the spaceship as she watches a illusion of Earth being exploded by using all of its nuclear arsenal against itself. It's just mad, it's wacky, it's crazy, but so was Sharda, and that is why I like Douglas Adams' Doctor Who. I think that I've definitely got a special fond place for it in my heart, because, as I say, it's just that wacky version of Doctor Who, but at the same time, you've essentially got this race that is going to wipe absolutely everybody out, and the, the actual cricket men are a threat. They feel like a threat, and they feel like a race that generally do mean we're going to kill absolutely everything, and I do really like that. We also stumble across this sort of sentient robot thing called Hector, and we have this whole idea of what if this robot develops this equation that can essentially create a bomb to blow up absolutely everything apart from one race on one planet, and then the robot develops the idea and thinks, well hang on, why do I want to blow up the whole universe? Should I sort of add in a few issues so when the bomb actually comes to work and it gets detonated, it does in fact happen and everything doesn't die because the bomb doesn't actually want to go off in the very end and the robot doesn't want the bomb to go off. And I think that whole idea of having this robot sentience, especially whilst having a character like K9 on the TARDIS, is very much personal to the Doctor. I never really comment on how an actual story is written, but I feel that when reading this one, it just feels different. It doesn't really feel like a Doctor Who story. I can actually imagine somebody who is not a Doctor Who fan picking this up and actually reading it. I think that if you're somebody that enjoys books, I think you, you would enjoy this. If you virtually never came across Doctor Who before, which I think in this day and age is kind of impossible, but I think that if you don't have a clue what Doctor Who is, you could quite easily pick this up, read it, and actually enjoy it. I think generally the style that's been written in, which I am going to give James Goss some credit for as well, I think the way that he's adapted the story into the actual novelisation format, and the way that he's actually sort of recreated certain moments in this episode to actually be in the written vocabulary, and I think that, that works the way that we have also descriptions every so often. There is a moment, in fact, I think in the early early part of this, in fact at the very start of this story, that is brilliantly named chapter one, important and exciting galactic history do not skip. And it's just sort of introducing the story slowly, almost like a narrator, and then saying this is the universe, this is sort of the microcosm of what we're currently in right now, and what if this very simplistic idea was implemented throughout the whole universe. You do sort of feel like you're brought through the story and actually kind of explain certain parts, and I do really like that. And actually, generally, the chapter names themselves did actually have me laughing. There is sort of certain moments where you have, say, chapter 25, interruptions to a great mind, and then you have one, I do believe um, in the later half of the episode called All Dogs Go to Heaven or something like that, caught in a really big lie. That is a fun one as well. 
um, a sharp-sighted watchmaker. It's just a rather unusual God has a plan B. I, I quite like the name of that one as well. As I say, it's a rather unusual and wacky story. And at the same time, you get that serious element in there as well. There is sort of that occasional moment where you come out of the episode and have the fun moments of them, the explanatory moments as well with the narrative format. I think that James Goss has in fact done a very good job of recreating this. And I'm aware that the City of Death has also been novelised. I don't know if that was by James Goss. I think it may have been. And then we have the uh, Shard of One as well. I think that was done by um, Gareth Roberts, I think. And then we also have the Pirate Planet. I actually think that the Pirate Planet has recently been republished again, actually, for a paperback format. So yeah, that was also released in a hardback format like this a few years ago. So I may consider reading that one at some point, because especially with being Douglas Adams, I'm assuming that style is going to be there. And I know that that episode has a rather unusual format as well. I think it's going to be interesting to see how I do believe that that is in the Key to Time series. And it'll be fun to see how that part of the Key to Time was developed by Adams and actually sort of influencing the way that the story is written. So yeah, generally overall for the Cricket Men, I really, really like it. I would absolutely love to see a dramatisation of this episode at some point. I think that if we actually... I don't think they could do it, to be honest. I don't think they could do this within the actual new series. I think the only way to develop this and actually give it the full impact that it deserves is within either a big three-part story or a big two-part story even, and then also maybe a big feature-length film. Because I think that the ideas behind it, to, in order to be fully developed, need to be for a big massive story. So yeah, The Cricket Men is a really unique episode of Doctor Who, and as much as I love Sharda, which I do, I think that's a unique and brilliant Doctor Who story, that's no longer the Lost Doctor Who episode. I feel that that has never really been a Lost Doctor Who episode for me, even though it was never transmitted. I always see the DVD of Sharda, and I always think, that was within the Fourth Doctor era. And then, of course, it happened with the um, Eighth Doctor as well on Big Finish. I don't particularly question that. That can be canon as well. I don't really care about the canon to this point. I think that generally the thing about the canon is people get too intertwined within it. At the end of the day, I think that the fan themselves actually decide what is canon and what isn't. If you're a Big Finish fan, you will canonise all of Big Finish. If you're a comic book fan, if so, the Sixth Doctor and Frobisher comics are something of which they appeal to you, you will protect the fact that that is canon until your last dying breath pretty much because it's just that part of Doctor Who that you love and I think that with Sharda it's an episode that I've never actually deemed as not existing I've always seen it as a part of Doctor Who but this is one that I've literally it is literally a lost Doctor Who adventure being a Doctor Who fan since 2006 I've never heard of Doctor Who and the Cricket Men up until 2017 when I found out that this book was being released meaning that for me it is literally a true Doctor Who lost classic and if you're a classic Doctor Who fan then I definitely recommend picking this up because it is essentially classic Doctor Who adventures a whole brand new story but at the same time if you're somebody that is a fan of reading especially a fan of reading Doctor Who books I recommend this however if you're a new series fan this may be a little bit of a daunting release for you it may not have the, the perfect moments for you that you enjoy I think that the new series and the classic series Doctor Who is different tastes in that and if you're primarily a new series Doctor Who fan then this may be not a book release that you will thoroughly enjoy but yeah I think that generally this is definitely a, a must for a classic fan really especially if you're a fan of the fourth Doctor era and especially if you're a fan of either the Pirate Planet, City of Death or Sharda. And that is the Cricket Men. Wacky, wild, crazy, grandiose, invasion, cricket, mad. That's just that. It's odd, but I love it. Really, it for this Doctor Who book review. There'll be more on the way in the future, no doubt, for other book releases throughout 2018. I think that we do have, as I say, that novelisation of the Pirate Planet and republishing of that at some point. We also have the new series Target novels at some point. Uh, we have Whoology in there as well. So there's a lot of different things on the way in the future, so I'm very much looking forward to be covering those on this channel at some point. And generally, as I said at the very start of this review, if you're wondering about the different formats that this release is in fact being done in, audiobook, CD, uh, sort of the narrative, Kindle edition as well that you can see all that in the description below. I guess that is it for the Cricket Men. If you have any questions about this release then please do leave them in the description below and I'll try to answer them as best as possible. I guess I will see you all in another Doctor Who review at some point in the near future that I can probably guarantee isn't going to be as wacky and wild as the Cricket Men because that is on a whole new different podium of its own or a whole new wicket of its own I guess. A whole new special intergalactic cricket ball of its own. Let's keep these cricket metaphors going because let's face it, there isn't going to be many Doctor Who episodes that you can actually involve cricket within, apart from the fifth Doctor era. But yeah, that's that. I guess I'll see you all in the next Doctor Who review at some point in the near future. Bye for now.